Explain to people as though they're five years old. Yeah. As though they're 20 years old. (laughs) (laughs) Explain to people like they're 20 years old. What? When someone says Pebble Mine, okay, what is Pebble Mine? Considering that it's, at this point, it's nothing. But what are we talking about when we talk about Pebble Mine? Pebble Mine is a proposal to build either the second largest or the largest open pit gold and copper mine in the world at the headwaters of the most productive wild salmon fishery left on the planet. And it's a choice for Alaska. You know, we're, we're at a crossroads. We got to decide whether we're going to allow everything everywhere or are we just going to say some places are just too important for renewable resources, for thousands of American jobs, for America's you know, natural heritage, and we're not going to allow this to go forward. The superlative largest or second largest, what does that hinge on? Well, it's all about the habitat when you're talking about sockeye salmon production, right? So no, I'm talking about the mine size. Like it would be the well, largest or like, you mean there's there's varying proposals or like it's unclear how to measure them? Well, the, there's there's this is where it gets really confusing for the public and incredibly irritating for us that are trying to you know punch through and tell the truth on this thing it is the largest known gold resource and the second largest known copper resource in north america and when the head of the company pebble limited partnership this guy named ron Thiessen, goes and talks to investors at you know world gold forum and things like that he talks in those terms those superlatives that this is a you know, world-class resource that we may be able to mine it for a hundred years or more. But then when Pebble comes back to the public, when Pebble gives a proposal to the Army Corps of Engineers, they say, oh, we're going to be there for 20 years and then we're going to go away. And, you know, there's really no way to sugarcoat it. It's a flat-out lie. And the government right now is swallowing it hook, line, and sinker. It makes it incredibly frustrating because I, I just, you know, if you talk to people that don't have a that don't have skin in the game, that are experts in the mining world, they'll tell you that they're not going to make any money in the first 20 years, and there's no way they're going to stop after 20 years. The shareholders wouldn't let them. Everybody who was part of the company would get sued, and they would just put a whole new set of leadership in there and then apply for a little additional permit and just keep going. Would it somehow make it better if they did stop after 20 years? Yeah. Would that that ease your mind? (laughs) Not really, no. And... Because the, the damage will be done as far as like the in, all the infrastructure and the what it takes to open the mine, right? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would, I would point. I would try to find, you know, a place in the world where that's happened, right? Where you spend billions on infrastructure, roads, a port, uh, getting a natural gas pipeline out there, and and then just quitting after twenty years, right? When you we, you may have not turned a profit by that point. So, I, I just you know that's not going to happen. And then you have a whole bunch of other mineral claims staked around the Pebble Prospect. The thing that people don't realize is you're looking at a 1,000 square miles of mining claims at the headwaters of Bristol Bay. And that would make it one of the largest mining districts, if not the largest mining district in the world. And you start thinking about the implications for wild salmon production, and you look at wild salmon runs all, the, all throughout the Pacific Rim, and you pretty much know how the story is going to end. You know, uh, have you ever heard this, that all of the gold that's ever, that's in existence above ground, so all of the gold that's ever been hauled out of the earth since the Egyptians, is there's only enough to fill three Olympic-sized swimming pools. Huh. Really? All of that gold. Yeah. Three point Forbes. Forbes Forbes estimates that it would take that all the gold since 2000 B.C., including the Egyptians, that all of that gold would fill 3.27 Olympic swimming pools. That's what's ever been dragged out of the earth. Because yeah. in that one Die Hard movie, they had so many <laughs> trucks full <laughs> that you would think that would have been 10 pools. Yeah, but I mean, a <laughs> Olympic size swimming pool is no joke, though, either. Man. Yeah, it's a lot of volume. <laughs> the Okay, put your uh, mining engineer head on for a minute. I don't have one of those, but I'll try. Okay. 
I mean, I mining engineers are smart people. We should have brought one in. Like, yeah. e explain, because it's the process, right? Part of what pisses people off about Pebble Mine, it, like, it's not like you're out, it's not like a bunch of old dudes dressed up like Hatchet Jack out there with gold pans pulling nuggets. Right. Yeah. Like, I explain leech, you know, cyanide leech mining. Yeah. So, it, you know, with Pebble, to get back to the, speaking to the 20 year old it's size type location right it's the it's the size of the mine we, we've already talked about that it'd be one of the biggest excavations in the history of mankind really when you include the pit and the infrastructure so pebble pebble if, if to go to full build out would use more energy on a daily basis in the city of anchorage and you've been through there a bunch of times it's not a small town it's two hundred sixty thousand people there. it would suck up that amount of electricity yeah and use or fuel and and water it would use more than twice as much water that is used by a city of two hundred sixty thousand people on a daily basis you're so, kidding me and you know i don't know if you've ever flown over the mine site area there's nothing there i mean it's just it's just wilderness yeah it's it's an amazing spot and it drains two ways towards two river systems, up towards the Nushagak, Mulchatna, and then down, down towards Lake Iliamna and the, the Quijak River. And those are the two major drivers of the, of the salmon fishery that I think we'll probably talk about a little bit. But so from an engineering standpoint, you're talking something, you know, the biggest development project in Alaska since they discovered oil on the North Slope and built the, the Trans-Alaska Pipeline and, you know, Dead Horse and Prudhoe Bay and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, so you got a size, and then you have the type of a mine. So there's a lot of gold and copper in the ground, but it's not a very rich ore body. Um, it sits <coughs> in, a, in a big sulfide deposit, and you basically... So a friend, a friend of ours who's worked for a long time with us who has some background in mining, and he used to be the state senate president, a guy named Rick Halford, lo lifelong Republican, um, big game guide, retired big game guide. He, uh, he calls it a sulfur mine with a gold and copper component. You have to get through a whole bunch of waste rock to get to the gold and the copper. And then the big problem, the engineering problem, the one that's chased away Anglo-American and Rio Tinto and Mitsubishi and Quantum Minerals, some of the heavy hitters, has been what the hell are they going to do with all that waste? Because you have... Whole, those are other mining companies yes. that you just named. Yeah, and they no, all... Those are like the contractors... There's like the developer and then the contractor. There's the or is developer. That, is that analogy not accurate? There's here? the developer, the sort of the, the hype machine, which is Pebble Limited Partnership, uh, the snake oil salesman, Yeah. if I may. And then there's the, the majors who actually design and operate mines. And, and we should get to the fact that, that Pebble, part, like the sort of brain, the, the, the sort of uh, brains behind this, I'd like to get to this because I don't understand this well. They're having a hard time sort of finding the contractor. Right. Like They're like, hey, here's this crazy house we're going to build, and contractors keep coming in and being like, eh, that's not for us. So, I like that analogy, yeah. So you get Anglo-American, Rio Tinto, Mitsubishi, Quantum, all walked away. Anglo walked away from a $570 million investment. And I think it's, you know, it really comes down to, and what we've heard through the grapevine and Lots of experts that have just kind of been around the proposal throughout the years have said, we just don't know how you're going to manage that kind of waste over time. It would be like, like a Berkeley pit beyond comprehension. 